Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic, and as always, I'm back with another video. Now this one's a follow-up to a video we did previously on the common headlight problems on the late model Ram pickups. I'm going to show you another item you can check and how to repair it. Now the removal of that headlamp assembly was covered very thoroughly in that previous video and I want to give you a link in the description below this one on going to that video to see how to remove it. But in this case we're not covering that, we're actually covering the other repair procedure. Because in that video we had a problem with the connection at the headlight bulb so we replaced that section of jumper harness. In this vehicle, we've got a problem with the main connector going to the assembly, and that's what this is going to be about. So make sure to watch that video on how to remove the assembly, and in this video, we're going to go over the more common problem, which is the connection with the main connector. So consider this a public service announcement. In this video, we're going to be using a soldering iron and solder. You can pick these up at any one of your local auto repair stores or Home Depot or Lowe's. All we're doing is applying heat, applying solder. But some of you may opt to try to use butt connectors. Please, whatever you do, do not use butt connectors. I don't care how good quality they are, you're crimping, you're not actually soldering anything here. So it's a matter of how hard you crimp it, whether or not you've got a good enough connection. And remember now, we're trying to get rid of a connection issue already. So if you're going to be using this, do me a favor, throw them in the trash. Now back to your regular scheduled program. Now the connector we need to get to is on the back side of the headlamp assembly. Once we get it out of the way, it's going to be this green one right here. That's the main connector coming from the vehicle harness going to the wiring that's part of the headlamp. This is the one that we're going to cut out and solder the wires together. Now each one of these wires is a different color, which is actually going to benefit us in the end because I'm going to leave the connector plugged in and I'm just going to make a clean cut here and a clean cut there. Then I'll know which wires need to be paired up with the other corresponding wire. I'm going to grab a pair of side cutters, make a clean cut, go over to the other side and cut it as well. So as I just mentioned, with that connector out of the way, you can easily see the different color combinations you're going to be pairing up. On this particular vehicle, we've got a white and blue going to a white and brown, black and blue going to a black and green, and so on and so on. And this is how we're going to be matching them up. We'll grab that white and brown, white and blue, we'll strip them, we'll solder them together and put some heat shrink and then we'll continue on to the second and third wire. So now we'll grab a pair of wire strippers and start pulling off a section of the insulation from the wiring. We'll repeat this with all six wires. Now with the wire strip, we're going to slide three pieces of heat shrink on. Now this heat shrink is a special type, it has a sealant inside, so as we're heating it up, the sealant's going to come out and it's going to make for a weatherproof seal. So just grab your three pieces and slide over three of the wires that we had cut previously. Now one of the tools I like to use whenever I'm doing wiring repairs is a crimping tool. Now we're going to be crimping a sleeve over the wires and we're not going to be using a butt connector. Please, whatever you do, do not use butt connectors on these repairs. They're not weatherproof. There are some out there that are, but they still don't make the connection that you need. Instead, I'm going to be using something else. And if you don't have access to one of these tools or the little brass crimps, you can actually just twist the wires together and solder it and that'd be just as well. Now the brass pieces that we use are kind of U-shape. The two wires get inserted on both sides and that tool actually squeezes it tight. The brass crimp gets inserted into one of the corresponding matching sized holes on the front of the tool. A matter of inserting it into it, squeeze down gently just to hold it in place and then you would insert a wire on this side and then on the other side as well. Once you've got them in place you would squeeze down on it and as you squeeze down on it it actually crimps that brass into a nice tight fit. So if you don't have the crimping tool, as I mentioned earlier, you can just grab the two wires, twist them tight, and what we're going to be doing is, this is just a temporary hold, 
until we apply solder to it. And once we apply solder to it, that would be the permanent hold and then slide the heat shrink over it. But I've got the tool so I'm going to be using it throughout this video. So I'll go ahead and grab that crimping tool and find the corresponding matching wires that I need to crimp together. And go through each one of these, make sure I've got them crimped nice and tight. And then I'll go down and repeat it on the other two wires as well. So now we're going to apply some heat with a soldering iron. And start melting the solder onto that brass crimp that we put on there or the twisted wires, depending on every technique you're using. Make sure you get a good, even flow of solder. So now we'll go ahead and slide the heat shrink over the little areas that we just soldered. Get them in place. That way we can start heating them up. There we go. Now you can use a, a micro torch or even a cigarette lighter to do this. But in this case, I've got a heat gun. And as we're heating it up, you're going to see it start shrinking and you're also going to see on the ends that we're going to have some of that sealant come out. That's why this is good quality heat shrink. And there you have it. You look real close, you can see the sealant right here coming out. We know it's completely collapsed, so this one's done. We'll move on to the other two. So now we've got all three of the wires soldered together and heat shrink, we're going to grab some electrical tape and we're going to make this look a little bit cleaner. Just going to work this around. And there you have it. We eliminated the connector and now we've got a permanent connection between the wires. We don't have to worry about any kind of intermittent issues. So that's the repair I was wanting to show you previously on the other video, but unfortunately that wasn't the problem we were having at the time. So there you have it. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you got any comments or suggestions about today's video on this repair we did, or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram, you can always email me at david at MotorCityMechanic.com, and I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. Now, if you're a new viewer, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you're a returning subscriber, go to the main page and hit the bell icon next to that subscribe button. That way you get notified instantly when videos such as this get uploaded. And if you'd like to shop on Amazon, please feel free to use the link that's in the description below this video and I will get credit for that and that's one way you can help support this channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Once again everybody, thanks for watching all these videos.